before we go and make modifications to our code, there is something I want to change at a CSS level. Basically, I want the width of the game to fit 100% of the space it has available so that we can see everything when the screen is small like that. So I'm going to go and add a style a tag here. And what I'm going to do in the style tag is select the canvas tag. We only have one canvas element here, so I can go and inspect and um, verify that we've got that canvas there. So I want to select my canvas and I want it to have a width of 100%. And then I'm going to close my style tag. Um, so by doing that, if I refresh this, we get to see the entire space, which will make our job easier. And it might also be what you want for your actual game. Okay, um, so what we are going to do now is, first of all, remove that default sound because it is going to keep on playing if we leave that there. And I want to be able to create all of the different um, items that will go in this particular scene. So if you go and expand your asset folder and images, you'll see that we have all of these nice images here. We have a building, a car, a house and a tree. And we are going to place all of them here and do a little bit of scaling as well. So one way of doing that is to create individual sprites such as this for each one of those elements. But uh, what we'll do instead is uh, create a group and inside of that group we can add an array that will create every single one of these of the elements that we are interested in adding. All right, so I'm going to call this group items and to add this group we are going to type this.add.group. This creates a new group for us. And we can go here if we wanted to create a group with a single element, we could add some curly brackets here and enter some information about that element. So I'm going to start by adding a single element. The key of that element is going to be the building key, which is our um, image that we loaded. And we can set the position of that building in this manner. Set XY is an object that will have a component X, in this case 100, and Y 240. So you can go and you can try different uh, coordinates as well. So I already know what position I want my uh, items uh, at, but um, if you want to position them somewhere else, you can do so. So let's go and refresh and see what we get. All right, so we get that building shown there. Um, you can also go and add multiple elements to this group, multiple different elements, because you could use the repeat um, key uh, here if you wanted to add multiple buildings and you can space them out but we're not going to do that here we are actually going to go and add different objects with different sprites with different um, keys so we create this array and then and then inside of that array we are going to have every one of our of our group elements so uh, actually that's that's how this goes so let me get the indentation right here Okay, so um, we got the first one, the first of these elements here, it is that building. So I'm gonna add a comma and add the second element, which will be a house. So the house will be located in 240 and 280. So that is the position of the center of the house. Let's see what we get. The house is a little bit too big, so I'm going to change its scale. So we're going to add another object here called set scale, and that allows you to enter custom values for the scale of the house, which could be 0.8 and 0.8, which will make the house smaller. Uh, imagine that we had uh, that we had placed the background after we created the group. In that case, you wouldn't be able to see any of those elements, um, but we can we can adjust that by playing with the depth of our of our sprites. So let's go and place the background in a variable so I can show you in the console here. And we're gonna show that sprite in the console. And I'm gonna show you the value of the depth of the background, which is the default value of all sprites. And you will see that this value here is zero. Um, so the way that sprites are sorted here has to do with the depth. 
the lower the number, the more in the background it is. Or um, similarly, the higher the, the the higher the number here, the more on top that the item will show. So if I go and I change the background's depth to minus one, since uh, the other one, the other sprites will have a depth of zero. Zero is the default. Now the background will show behind the the other items. So this one has a depth of minus one, means that it is it is placed underneath the other ones. Uh, now let's go and place it back back on the. Oh, actually, let's 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 remove this this line here because I want to show you something else, which is how what would you do regarding the group. So if instead of modifying the the background's depth we actually want to change the depth of the elements in the group, then we can access our group, these dot items, and use the method called set depth. And we could set them all to be, um, in this case, one, so that it is higher than zero. Remember that background will have depth zero. So if our items have a depth of one, they will show on top of the background. So those are two different ways of, of doing that. And in fact, I'm going to leave it like this so that um, it just you keep this as an example of how that can be done. So this is the background and this show the group sprites on top of the background. All right, so uh, that is something else I wanted to show you. And we now are going to add the remaining elements here. So I've got, we still have to add the car and the tree. So I'm gonna copy and paste this element here a couple more times for the for the car we're going to place this in position 400 and position 300 here and for the tree and we're going to keep yeah same scale 0 0.8 and the tree is not going to have any change in scale and it's going to be in position 550 and 250 remember that i already know where to place them but you can always, uh, by trial and error, you can see where they are or where you want to have them. Uh, now, what if you want to have um, group elements positioned differently? Well, they are they are displayed in the order that you add them. For example, you add the building first and then the house. So the house will be shown on top of the building, above the building. The car will be shown will be rendered above the both the house and the building, and the tree will be rendered above all of them. Now let's go and make our items interactive. And I'm going to do that with the background first to, to show you, and then we're going to do it with each one of the elements of the group. So we are going to place this background in a variable again and make the background interactive. We are simply going to type background.set interactive. What that does, it enables Phaser's input plugin on our background sprite. And that gives us access to a series of events that have to do with the either the mouse or the touch screen. It works in both ways. Um, for example, we can detect when the pointer, in this case the, the mouse, is down, but it will also work for a touch screen if the touch screen is down. So now that our background is interactive, we can add an event listener. And the event that we're going to listen to is pointer down. And when the when that is um, is triggered, we are going to call this, this function here. The pointer, pointer parameter will give you uh, information such as the coordinates of where you were clicking. So let's do here console log, whoops. Um, click and let's show the pointer as well. So let's uh, refresh the page and click on the background. Um, so you can see how we're getting that click every time that we that we click on the background, and we get that pointer object which has um, information such as the the position of the of the click and also other details relating this particular. Um, event that just took place. Okay, so that is how we do it for one sprite. And what we'll do now is add add this for all of our for all of our items. So what we'll do is 
type these dot items so we want to go through each one of them so there are different ways of doing this so one way of doing this is um, typing actually facer dot actions dot call so we're going to call a function in um, all of the elements of an array the array in this case is items dot get children um, so we're going to do it in that way and then we're going to call a certain function for each one of the items and lastly we are going to pass in this which is the current context of our of our scene object so that we can access that object inside of this function so when we do that we now have access to item here which will be each one of the different sprites that we are processing and what i wanted to do was to listen to the um, to the on down event same thing we did before for the background but first i need to make the items interactive so we're gonna get rid of this and we're going to add here make the item interactive remember that item here is simply a sprite so you can do anything that you can do with sprites a group is nothing but a set of sprites okay so we are making our item interactive now we want to listen to that on down uh, sorry pointer down event so item dot on the event is called pointer pointer down and we are going to um, write the callback in here so in this part we could say something like console.log and we want to say which which one of the items we clicked so we can say um, you clicked and the we can get we can show the the key of the item so we can show the corresponding key of the of the actual asset so that would be item dot texture dot key so now you can say for example you click building you clicked house you clicked tree you clicked car so that is how we can create a bunch of um a bunch of sprites using using a group and the groups give us access to the the, the elements of the group in this manner and we basically go through each one of them make them interactive objects and then we are listening for an event so that opens a lot of doors for what we can do next because we want to be able to um, then move on to doing some twin animations for when you select um, one of the items and also do things such as uh, when you when you hover the mouse on top of the item you can have a, some kind of animation or some kind of effect and then when you move it out of the item you can have an, um, another thing happening um, so we'll look into that in the next lesson.